Okay, we'll go ahead and get started and stay on time for the afternoon. Um, this presentation is about just the automated, all the automated data entry options that we have within FBS. Um, and we have um, identifying your data sources. We have feed mills, and we have payroll, we have packers, we have your tractor monitors, and we have different crop management softwares out there. And these are all different um, sources of data that we want to we want to pull all this into FBS. And um, putting data in can take a lot of time and effort, and we want to minimize that time and effort and get it in. Um, time is money, and but you have three sides of it. Time is money, but you also have the quality of the, um, the and, and results too. So you have to be able to balance those three things, your time, your money, and, and your quality of the end product. So when you're um, hand entering, your, your time and your employee's time is money. If you calculate on $10 an hour and it takes you an hour a week to input feed tickets, you're spending $520 on just inputting feed tickets. Um, but then you have to ensure the quality of your data. Humans make mistakes. And if you estimate an hour a week for editing incorrect entries and double checking the data that you entered, that would be an additional $520 um, a year just on your feed ticket. So, um, what, that's $1,040 a year total on, on entering just a feed ticket. And that's using an hour a week and $10 an hour. If you import your data, um, the average time to import data is a minute. Um, the cost to import your data through um, buying one of the import modules, um, or I ten, at ten dollars an hour, the cost would be eight dollars and thirty-two cents a year for importing that data using that ten dollars per hour rate. Um, since you have no human putting the data entry in, you have more qual better quality data. You might actually take a few minutes to review the transaction report. So I gave five minutes a week to review your reports, um, and that's forty-one dollars and sixty cents a year. So the initial cost of the import module is around a thousand dollars, depending on the module, and your update cost every year is around two hundred dollars. Could be less depending on your support package and your discounts. So your first year cost difference is nine dollars and ninety-two cents between hand entering and using our import process. Subsequent year savings is approximately $790 a year. And plus, you have an extra 50, 50 hours a year your employee can be working on something else. Um, the first um, import I want to talk about was the mock interface. And this is the interface with the um, your tractor monitors. Um, this is kind of a screenshot of what the interface looks like. Get my mouse working here. And uh, for the de the um, example here, I just use a CSV harvest data from the Digistar CSV file. And these are the screens that come up. And um, here's the description that comes off the file from Digistar. Uh, and you match it to a center and a project and a field in FBS. Um, this mapping only has to be done once unless you change the description and Digistar or whatever ever monitor it might be. And um, then up here, once you have all this mapped, this is what's going to come across for that field. It has the date, the field, um, the acres, the moisture, the dry quantity, the wet quantity, and the net weight. Um, so you pull this, this CVS file from your monitor, bring it to FBS, tell it where to look, find the date range, do the mapping, and it comes in. Oops, I lost my mouse again here. Sorry. Uh, currently supported out through the Mach 2 interface, our Ag Leader Apex Trimble Digistar, um, the, the old conservice interface, and granular interface. The, the, the old conservice interface is where you take an Excel file from conservice. We do have a new interface that we'll show at the end, but there is always the old option there as well. Uh, the second kind of interface we have is our mill interface, and this can be commercial mill or feed mill. Um, the difference between the two mill interfaces that we have is commercial mill um, come, creates either, uh, an accounts payable entry as well as the, 
the smart feeder entry. The feed mill interface only creates the smart feeder side of things. Um, again, you get a file from the mill, and depending on the mill, it could be either EDI, Excel, text, or CSV. Um, then you come and you map the in what they call the ingredient at the mill to what they what we call an FBS or what you call an FBS. You m map your rations comes over as a called one thing on the mill, and you map it to what it is an FBS and the location. You get location from the mill, and you map the center and the group. Um, currently, we support feed mill manager, manager, feed office pro, Agris, Agtronics, Hubbard, Student Gay, QuickBooks, invoicing, DeKalb, Farm Services, and any file that can be put into an Excel or CSV file that lists the date, the ticket, the ration, the location, the ingredient, the pounds, and the dollars. <clears throat> all these, you can notice all of these. Um, Imports work on the same premises. You do the mapping, get the file from the, the other vendor, you map it, and, and then it comes over in FBS. Um, packer file the same way. Um, you get the file from the packer. These traits you already have set up. You so you have um, you know hog sales is equivalent to hog. You know what what's your ledger count in FBS for hog sales uh, for all your premiums and all your back fats and yields and um, further down there's also the uh, ledger accounts for the weight classes. You usually get a tattoo number from the packer and you map that tattoo number to a center and a group within FBS. And it imports your, um, your kill data and creates an accounts receivable with the packer interface. The current packers that we uh, support right now are Tyson, Hatfield, Smithfield, Indiana Packer, Triumph, Excel, Cargill, Swift, Farmland, Clemens, Carolina Pride. Um, but if we, if you have a packer you work with, um, and they can get you the, the information necessary information, and in Excel format we can we will work to bring that in. We also bring in payroll. We do have a direct import um, from Red Wing Centerpoint payroll. Um, I didn't have a screenshot for it because it's really, you don't do anything on the FBS side. It's all on the Centerpoint side. You run your payroll, have your setup and payroll over there. It's mapped to FBS centers and ledger accounts and divisions on the Centerpoint side. You create an export file through Centerpoint, and then as soon as you go into FBS, it asks you tells you you have an import file and do you want to import it and it comes in. Um, even though we have that relationship with Centerpoint Red Wing, other payroll programs can be imported into the TA Plus import routine. And I'll mention more about the TA Plus import routine next. The TA Plus import export routine can import anything that's in Excel or CSV format. Journal entries, checks, deposits, account payable and receivable. Um, it's not all, I mentioned it's not just listed to accounting either. We can bring in any kind of data that's in Excel format or CSV format. And Excel can be transferred to CSV through Excel um, program. Um, so you can even be bringing in like death loss, medication, um, stuff like that. Um, there's a map setup that you have to do once as long as you don't change the setup of the file telling it what column equals what data field in FBS. This can also be used with some of your setups in FBS like ledger accounts, vendors, centers, and such. Okay. I'm going to pause this for now and kind of go through some of the live stuff and kind of show you how it works live and then we'll get on to the last part of that presentation. Um, so the uh, commercial mills and stuff is all the imports, commercial mill packer, um, Mach 2, and the conservatives and TA plus is all under the import export menu. This is just the basic feed mill interface. Let's go down a little bit. Um, these are for like on farm mills. 
that you would have where you're not creating an invoice anywhere, you're just distributing the feed. Um, these are the options that we have, the different vendors that we've worked with. I mean, tell it where the file is saved, you give it a date range. Um, if I had a file here, it would, it would load the mill rations on the left hand side, and I tell them what mash, rations those match with an FBS and I'd transfer it across. Um, one difference here in the um, feed mill interface compared, compared to commercial mill is that you just have ingredient numbers. Um, so the first one listed, the second one listed, the third one listed, and what ingredient that is in FBS. So there's not actually a name on the feed mill side that you map to an FBS. So the commercial mill is one step above that. This is when you get your invoices from out, um, either outside mill or a mill within that you're charging. Maybe your mill's in a different company and you're charging your, your feeder company from the mill company and you want to create an AP. Um, most of these times, are, these are off-site, independently owned mills. And here you can see that um, these are the mill ingredients as show up on the file. So if I was going to look at this file, it's a simple file. Let me get to that. This is what the file looks like coming from the mill. The text file. It grabs up out of the headers, the different locations, and we have our ingredients, and it pulls that across. This is what we call the mock interface. This is what comes from you know, different kinds of um, tractor monitors and such. You have your ag leader, your John Deere mapping, um, an XML file, a CSV file for your harvest data, your application data. Um, we have Trimble, Apex, ag leader, Digistar, the conservice uh, application and cart log. And then we have a granular application record we bring in as well. And you pick your source over here. It tells me on this one I have 178 things I need to map. My field map. So for each of these lines, and there's several lines here. Um, yeah, I'd have to map up each of these 24 lines uh, with a center and project and field in FBS. go through all those. And it tells me I didn't map 175 of them and that's okay. Then you also map the chemicals here. Um, so like on this 1034O I tell it was fertilizer and then I have to find um, an equivalent, my equivalent here that's already put into FBS. You don't have to be in FBS already on this screen um, or I'd have to go ahead and set up and add it and then and reopen the screen to get the um, fertilizer to show up. And this is a, we'll, we'll show the, con, the um, conservice interface here in a minute, but this is a, the biggest, one of the bigger differences between doing it the old way through the mock interface and the newer conservice type interface we have is that you have to have everything already in here where the conservice will bring in and let you add on the, as you bring it in, bring it across. If I had everything mapped, it would let me batch import and it would come across. Initial setup on that takes takes a little bit of time, obviously. And uh, my TA plus import export is not working on my machine right now. I'm missing a file on there, so I cannot show you that um, from my screen. Um, that's pretty wide open on what you can bring in. You, um, A lot, I, 
really common one would be like the said like the payrolls from the other payroll programs other than Center Point Red Wing that would come across you could bring across in that TA plus import export. Okay. Um, the last thing we want, I wanted to sh show hands on here um, and get going was the actual conservice integration. We're going to demo how it works um, from the conservice side and the FBS side. Um, and this is big in our, um, obviously, our, our big project for the year as far as bringing in um, imports. And it pulls directly from your current service interface, it pulls in your inputs and the setup of new centers and fields. And. I'm going to let Gary put in some inputs here, and I'll show you how it comes on the FBS side. <coughs> Anybody use conservancy? Right. Uh, what, I, what I wanted to do um, is just do, a, we're going to do uh, an input, uh, and then uh, Sarah will show us what uh, it looks like on the on the FBS side and then we'll use that input on an activity record so what I want to do today is is set up uh, and in th we're, we're picking we're kind of cherry picking some of the process that uh, we use on on conservice but uh, I'm going to define an input that you would use on a field uh, in this case it's going to be a, uh, a chemical so let's uh, go down here input And we're going to create a new input here. Make it, it's a chemical, and we'll make it a herbicide. And uh, let's spell it. <laughs> I've never used this. I've never used this keyboard in my life. <laughs> default uh, inventory units gallons in our application so that's what it takes to create an input in, in conservice and I'm done so Sarah show us the magic and FBS will pick up all that setup so you're not having to type it in twice <coughs> so I just opened the the uh, screen automatically went out and looked for it. I can click through here to see what's new. Right away I see it's this uh, Roundup Power Max. I click on Quick Add. And now I come into Crops, Chemicals. I have my Power Max right there. It has everything um, the gallons and the conversion right there coming across. Um, the chemical type, I don't, it defaults to one because I don't know that Gary put a chemical type. And on the conservist side, it would have grabbed the conservist side if that is the case. Um, EPA number is coming, it's just not coming across yet. Um, that's next, next phase. Okay, so we have an input, um, and uh, you know we have an activity. We're going to go do some spraying, and we're going to use the Power Max, and uh, so we're going to create an activity record for for spraying, and we'll uh, use that as our input. So I'm going to create a new spray ticket, and we'll, we'll define the sprayer. And I'm going to be the operator because it's a really nice day, and I want to go out and drive the tractor. Pick a field. This is going to be a corn crop. Uh, we're going to do 200 acres. And we need to put a start stop time in for this. So we'll start it at 8 this morning. And we'll finish it at 11. 
this commonly done for the field career? Could be, yeah. This, this, um, there's a mobile app that you would, you could do this from. And yeah, most probably it would probably be done in the, in the tractor. So, and I'm going to specify a chemical. And there's the power max I just put in. It's gonna. I can change my my units. I'm not going to change that. And I'm going to say I'm using about two gallons an an acre. So I've I've used on my 200 acres 400 400 gallons of this. And I create my ticket. And I'm done. So you can see that somebody is putting it in the field, and it's instantaneously as long as they have the internet connection out in the field. <coughs> right into the office. There's no worry about bringing the file in. Okay. I'm stop and come back in here. Exit. Oops. Is it the right one? Yeah, maybe. You see it right there. Um, it didn't find, <coughs> I'm looking at center, but there was no new center to map. It had already been mapped. Um, there was no new fields. All the fields had already been mapped previously. Um, there was no chemicals because they had already been mapped and brought in previously. So all I have here is the application. Um, because the center field had already previously been mapped, it already grabbed the project as well. So there was absolutely no mapping to do with this application. Um, had there been a new center or a new field, I would just clicked on Quick Add. It would have added the center and the field into FBS with all the necessary information for FBS. Right now, I just need to apply it. It goes from applied to save. I finish it. Now I can report on it in any of my crop reports. my application my power max there it'll also show on my inputs report my application my 400 gallons of my roundup power max so it's a real time and anybody who's in the in the um, end of the day yesterday, I heard Martin say that right now we do have to go to input and conservative interface, but uh, version 11 of FBS, that would be behind the scenes. It will just pop up and give you a message if there's something you have to map. Otherwise, you'll never even see, once you have things mapped, you won't ever even see that um, screen in FBS. Um, One question, sir. Yeah. Is this looking like um, if you had already purchased the power map? Yeah, we're pulling just applications out of conservice. So yeah, that would uh, you wouldn't have had if that was the case, and we already had PowerMax and FBS. Um, you would have mapped. Hopefully, we've already had it mapped between conservice and FBS. Had you not, you would have mapped it instead of quick adding. You would just mapped it to match the PowerMax um, that he added in, in conservice to an existing input in FBS. And the application would have um, just pulled out of the existing inventory. Because I'm envisioning that most people will probably do that pre-purchase of their chemicals in the accounting system. You'll keep track of your inventories in both systems. So. Right. Yeah. 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 The purchases will still be because you'll still keep up. You'll reconcile your two inventories between conservice and FBS, but both of those will still have records of all your purchases and applications. So it will, even though you're not typing into both places, the applications, both both systems will still be tracking all those applications. And so Conservus will get the purchase record? You have to put the purchase into Conservus separately. The purchases will have to be in, in both systems at this time. 
and then I, you know we're working on the piece where you know you you, you can put the purchase in in conservatives and we'll we'll flow that data into FBS. Mm -hmm. well, so we'll, I'm, I'm saying we'll be writing the check. Yes. Out of FBS. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So I would think that purchases would need to go. Other in stage two is flowing data the other way, putting okay. setup, all setup, can, eventually setup can be done in either system and push either way. This is first phase going from conservatives to FBS, the next will be FBS to conservatives in your choice of which way you're flowing data. Or if they've done a purchase in conservatives, I would expect it to create like an AP. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is the data in the cloud systems? FBS is not in the cloud. FBS is wherever your data is saved normally on your local or your own server or whatever it is. That's so, so you're linked to the data. We are we are we are going up and grabbing the entries and pulling them down. And from. the conservative data is in the cloud. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have a unique um, web address, you have an encrypted password with an FBS that goes out to your conservative site and grabs that data. Um, things that are grabbed or kept in conservatives that are not kept in FBS are the wind speed and the temperature outside. That type of reporting will have to be come out of conservatives at this time for your um, all your government reports that need all that information to make sure you met you know your environmental qualifications when you when you sprayed and stuff. But the actual application rates will be in, still be in FBS. Any other questions uh, on the conservatives interface or any of the inner any of the imports? I know it kind of went fast, but that's kind of the point of imports. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. I may be jumping the gun, but we do an integration to conservatives. Mm -hmm. So then does that data flow back down to the FBS? Scale ticket not not scale tickets, not at this point. But, but that scale tickets are part of harvest. That's harvest. Yeah. And that's the, that's the absolute. That's the one we're almost got done. Yeah. Harvest will be done. Was. Hope to be done by harvest time. Right. <laughs> and we will I, be. I think I think the conservative side is ready and it's, you know, Martin's still working on it. To, yeah. To finish that up, but I'm not sure about the. Uh, it should be the. It should be those tickets you got. I think that would flow. Yeah, we flow somehow into the conservative data set. And the data. Well, we would. Yeah, we well, get it in. Well, yeah, we have we have a right. integration with the vertical and then and then. As the tickets come in, then it would flow down because mm -hmm. you would see them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so inputs. Yes. Yeah. Inputs are inputs are done, um, and then the, the t applied as applied data, the tickets, uh, activity tickets are done now, and that's all available. And uh, we're we're real we're close. We're on, real close on harvest. harvest. So we we thought we. would Finish up this year, and then have the you know when the harvest starts in earnest. We we think we should be first harvest. of October, I yeah. think, the very latest. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's just in when we we kick it off to you know how mm -hmm. we kick it off to to FBS. Yes. <coughs> Probably some dumb questions here. Just waiting for the FBS. So when you bring in the packer data, is the money being an ACH as well? You could. You could if you see so bring in your what um, for your packer data would be create the AR. Um, I'm just or, or deposit. I guess on the on that packer data wouldn't be an ACH. So they actually still getting a check and you still get a check, sorry. Yes. Yeah, I was thinking AP side of things, not the AR side of things. So. No. Mm -hmm. We because we aren't hooked to the bank. We aren't hooked to your bank at all. I mean, you have to send the file to the bank for any of the ACH stuff. There's no way for us to send anything to your bank like that. I mean, fr from the vendor to the bank. <coughs> uh, I guess my question was, can you pull on that grant information? Oh, the green. If you can get it um, from ADM, if you can get that grant information in a CSV file or Excel file, we could pull it in. And so, can you break it out if you do the packer? Uh, you have seven, like the whole lot, the whole load was 100. 
75 came from one center, one group. As long as, I tat as long as I tattoo them differently. Okay. If, if the packer part of that. If the, yeah, as long as the packer will tattoo them and keep those separate, yes. Yeah, we might have three legs of hogs go down and, you know, two of them for one arm. Mm -hmm. It's just, we have had some packers who say if they come on in one truck, that's a lot. So, you know, they ta all tattoo them all the same. Um, obviously, if you had more than one group in that truck, that's an issue. But as long as a packer is willing to work with you and tattoo them based on how you want to separate them, then you're fine. That's through the Transaction Plus Import Export Routine. Mm -hmm. Currently, mm -hmm. I think that's how Heimroll, Heimroll Farms is the one client that we have that does that right now. Oh, do they? Okay. I don't work much with the Board of Supply. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, it's kind of a quick presentation, but yeah, you want, that's what you want with imports. <laughs> it's mostly <laughs> time saving. Um, so there's not much to show. We try to make them quick and easy. Um, And the same on the on the mill, the commercial mill files. As long as the mill doesn't change their description of the group center and group, once that's mapped, it stays mapped. You just have to add, uh, look for new ones. You click, click on load from actual, and the new ones show at the bottom, and they show unmapped. So as long as they don't change anything in their descriptions, you're not mapping that much every time. Just when you add new groups to your to your barns, um, and even in like uh, any of the interfaces, the you know, the conservice, you, the first time a new crop shows up in conservice, you have to map it or create it in FBS. Once that's mapped once, you don't do it again unless you change something in the ID. Is that the same with some of the other, like, aggregators? Yeah, all of them. As long as you don't change your right. so your location description, yeah. then you don't have to map it again. It remembers. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, okay. so that's a separate module. They're all additional modules. Mm -hmm. 